Can you hear me now? <laughs> awesome. I'm going to start over. So hello, everyone. Welcome to the MS Taxation Information Session. My name is Heather Holtman. I am an Enrollment Services Advisor here at the Lindner College of Business. Um, I am joined by Mark Bell, your Academic Director for the MS Taxation Program. And Lindsay, my colleague, will be monitoring the question and answer chat box. So if you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to um, open up your chat box and um, pop those questions in there. We'll stop periodically throughout the presentation to answer those questions, but there will also be a time um, at the end of the uh, presentation for, for us to go through some more questions and answers. Um, an overview of what we'll talk about today um, is the Lindner College of Business, what it's all about, its accreditations, how fantastic it is, um, specifically the Lindner MS Taxation Program. And this is an info session for the online modality. Um, you're going to meet Mark Bell, the program director. We'll also talk about the curriculum and how to create a competitive application. So the UC Lindner College of Business is a Carnegie Research One institution. We are the business college within the University of Cincinnati. We are AACSB accredited and only 15% of business schools in the world are AACSB accredited. Um, the Lindner College of Business is home to almost 6,000 students. Um, 1,300 of those students are in the graduate programs. We are ranked in the top 75 business colleges nationally. Um, that's a ranking by the U.S. News Report. We're number four for co-op education. Um, we are also neighbors to five Fortune 500 companies here in the Cincinnati region. And we offer programs in um, business, specifically your bachelor's programs, your graduate programs, and your graduate certificate programs. The online modality is 100% online and 100% asynchronous. That just means you'll never be asked to step foot on our campus and you'll never be asked to log in at say 9 a.m. to participate in a live class. We do not have a GRE or GMAT requirement for the MS taxation program. There are multiple start, start dates per year for this program. You will learn from nationally renowned faculty and industry experts who are versed in taxation and they are up to date on all of the latest taxation laws, procedures, policies. Um, the uh, Specifically, the taxation program here at the Lindner College of Business was ranked number 21 by New U.S. News and World Report for online graduate business programs in 21. Um, we are the top 10 largest tax programs in the nation. So now I'm going to hand it over to Mark Bell. He is your academic director for the MS Taxation Program. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming out today and uh, spending what, at least for me, is a little bit of a lunchtime hour letting people know what's going on with the program. I'm just, I'm not actually ignoring anybody. I'm using my other computer, so I have both your screen up and my other screen up so I can make sure I talk somewhat intelligently about what the MS Tax Program. So the way we have it structured, there are 15 classes. Uh, each one of them are two credit hours. And again, as was mentioned by Heather, everything is asynchronous, uh, meaning that there, there is no nothing you have to do at a particular time. There are certain, obviously, deadlines uh, each week and uh, each semester, but there, there's no deadline as far as within a given day what you have to do and what time you have to show up. Um, thus allowing you guys plenty of flexibility, especially you know, for those of you who are practicing professionals. You certainly have certain times of the year that are busier than others, and uh, we're very appreciative of that. Um, so the way we have it set up, as I said, we have 15, 15 classes. Every single one of them is required. Every single one of them is a two-credit hour class. Uh, every single one of them actually runs either in the first seven weeks of a semester or in the last seven weeks of a semester. So we call it first term or second term. Uh, the way we have it set up now, and this is actually kind of a recent change in the last year, <clears throat> We have only three classes that we offer in the spring semester, simply given that most of the folks who are applying for the MS tax program who enter the, the, the busiest time of the year, given all of the uh, requirements by the IRS uh, for forms being filled out, 
during those first three or four months during the year. Uh, so the way we have it set up, we actually only have one class that is offered in the first seven weeks of that spring semester, which starts usually the second week of January, and then two more classes that are offered in that second seven weeks. Then in both the summer and the fall, we have six, seven, or eight classes, depending upon, um, let's see, wait, 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 one, two, three, seven, seven in each of them. Sorry, I just wanted to check, make sure I was right. Seven classes in each of the uh, summer and fall semesters that are offered to you again. Half of them are in the first seven weeks and half of them are in the second seven weeks. Uh, you can take these classes really in any order that you prefer. Uh, no class is really a prerequisite for the other. The only thing that we ask is that the two classes we consider kind of the capstone classes, which are federal research individuals and federal research uh, corporations. We ask that you just don't take those in the first semester so that you have a little bit of understanding of what's going on within the program before you try to tackle those more capstone type classes. Uh, all of these all of these classes, every single one of them, all 15 of them are taught by tax professionals, uh, folks that are, uh, if, if not regionally recognized and nationally recognized uh, as experts, and they actually are practicing in the particular area that they are teaching you guys on. Uh, we should certainly try to be uh, as current as we can be uh, with regards to what is being taught in class, given that uh, tax law does, in fact, change frequently. Uh, we try to make sure that our videos and other assignments are updated as needed to take into consideration any tax changes. Um, so it, it's a very current program. Uh, certainly, we are nationally recognized. Uh, we get great compliments by really pretty much all the former students that I have seen or talk to uh, highly recommend the program. Uh, they really appreciate just how practically uh, focused it is. I mean, certainly there's a little bit of theory in there uh, as well as far, as far as why we're doing taxes the way we do them and whatnot. But most of that is very uh, hands-on practice oriented so that you can hit the ground running uh, as you learn this information and apply it almost immediately in whatever particular field uh, you happen to be in within your tax profession. So that's kind of a summary of the program again. There are, just to make sure everybody's on the same page, no uh, electives. It is 15 required classes, each of them two credit hours. Uh, you can take you can take a semester off if you need to if you're busy in the spring. Uh, you can certainly take a seven-week period off if you have family or, or work obligations that you certainly want to attend to rather than take class. Um, you can take as many classes as you want at a time. You can take as few classes as you want at a time. Generally speaking, most of the folks who enter the program tend to finish you tend to finish it within 24 months. Um, and again, I just, I just, I didn't, I don't think I mentioned this. Every class is only offered once per year with the exception of the two capstone classes that are offered in both summer and fall. All the other classes we offer one time per year. So there's the three classes in the spring. And then in addition to that, there are five classes that are offered every summer, five classes that are offered every fall. So that's 13 of the classes. The other two classes being the capstone classes, those are offered in both summer and fall semesters. So that's a summary of the program. I will turn it back over to Heather and that she can continue our lovely chat with you guys. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. So the sure. application process is a holistic um, process as far as the review committee, looking at each piece specifically, combing through each one of these topics that you were going to put into your application. Right now for the online program, we are waiving the $65 or $70 application fee. Um, you would need to upload your unofficial transcripts from any and all colleges that you've attended. Um, those are typically found on the college websites. They are typically free of charge. Once you are admitted to the program, we will need for you to order official transcripts through Parchment or National Student Clearinghouse and have those sent directly to the university. You will need a goal statement or a personal statement. Um, it's typically 500 words or less. Um, answering the questions, why Lindner MS taxation, maybe some of your own personal goals. And it gives you an opportunity to tell your own story. And let's say you had a less than stellar undergraduate um, GPA, and it just maybe comes in just below the threshold. 
you're able to, um, if you choose, get personal in that goal statement. And and maybe it was COVID. Maybe you were an undergrad during COVID, and that's why you um, feel that your GPA wasn't where you wanted it to be. That's your opportunity to kind of tell those stories. Um, also include any movement in your career, any um, accolades, any certificates, licensures, et cetera. You can highlight that in your goal statement as well. Um, the goal statement mirrors the resume. Your resume is going to be kind of bullet points of your life up until now as far as education and employment. Um, so more like the bullet point, typical resume. And then we will need one letter of recommendation. We prefer that these be professional recommenders. So someone you've worked under or someone you've worked alongside. Um, and the great thing about the letter of recommendation the only thing that you need to put in the application are their names and contact information. The university will actually reach out to your recommender, send them an email with a link, and they will submit their letter of recommendation through the email. International students, any um, degree that was earned outside of the United States will need to go through a course-by-course -course transcript evaluation. Um, any NACES member, uh, we do approve of any NACES member doing the transcript evaluation. Uh, we do prefer WES or we recommend WES or ECE. You can um, get a waiver for some of the um, the English exams, uh, such as the TOEFL or the ELTS or Duolingo. And uh, you may also get, if you're a permanent resident, you do not have to worry about a waiver. You will get waived. And that's what we were talking about there for the waiver. And then let's go a little deeper into the application process. This is our beautiful campus. So deadlines and start dates for the MS taxation program, we did mention that there were multiple start dates through the year. So here's just a snapshot. Um, sometimes they're called A term and B term within a semester. Um, some people refer to them as first half or second half. Tuition and scholarships. We always advise that our students um, fill out their FAFSA each year, even if you're not sure if you're eligible for student loans or grants. We do have an outstanding university to business partnership scholarship here at the University of Cincinnati online. Um, we affectionately call that the U2B program. Your business can partner with the University of Cincinnati online at no cost to your company, and it could award you between five and 20% off of the tuition fee. We also recommend that you talk to your um, current employer about any programs that your company might offer as far as tuition remission. The Here's the um, just 2024 tuition and fees. Typically, you're looking at around $1,100 per credit hour. Um, we have a $15 difference for out-of-state students per credit hour. And now we'll jump into the chat, or um, if anybody has any questions, they would like to unmute their microphone, you're able to ask questions that way as well. Uh, yes, uh, this is Bruce Jones. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm probably, I may be probably the oldest candidate thinking about doing this because I'm 77 years old, but I, <laughs> I've been in financial services for 54 years. Uh, I own a company that does tax planning and supports CPAs throughout the country in proactive tax planning. The reason I'm considering this is uh, my degree is actually in communications. Uh, however, uh, I've been in tax planning for decades. And I think it might be something well worthwhile, even at my age, to get a master's. Uh, you mentioned earlier, Heather, that uh, if a person was not particularly stellar in their academics during college years, I got out of school in the spring of 69. Uh, I probably average a C average. Uh, how, how does work experience play into all of this? I'm, I'm going to handle this one since I'm the one who actually reviews the applications. I can guarantee you I will not even look at your education other than the fact that you have a degree. Decades of experience are 
like to say far more important doesn't even begin to uh, <clears throat> illustrate how important I will view that work experience. I, the fact that you have an undergraduate degree from, you know, 40 years ago, plus or minus, you know, I, it, that doesn't impact me whatsoever. You, you, you've obviously demonstrated since then the overwhelming ability to understand what's going on in business and the tax world. The fact that you have an undergraduate degree is probably the only thing I will look at. Other than that, I will probably not even look at your grades. I appreciate that. Thank you. I, it just, that's just common sense, right? I mean, you, you've clearly demonstrated <laughs> the ability to function exceptionally well within the tax world. So that that's far more important than anything in regards to a transcript from you know four or five decades ago. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other questions? These tax people, they're all so quiet. I have a question. Um, my name's Taw Tawana Harris, and I hold a undergraduate degree in information systems. Um, I'm currently in the workforce, but I do not. Um, I'm, I'm in the middle of a career change. Um, I work in the banking industry, but I really want to uh, get involved in the corporate taxation side of things. Um, I have experience doing uh, individual taxation but I'm trying to transition to the corporate side. Um, my question is, what kind of relationships do you guys have with, um, you know, the corporate firm such as the Lowe or uh, PricewaterCooper that may offer um, certain externship opportunities or internships for the master's program? Um, do you guys kind of have relationships with those firms um, to kind of like, ins not ensure, but, kind of foster um, uh, employment um, upon graduation? Typically speaking, our master's students uh, are already employed. Uh, we don't spend, I'll, I'll be very, very blunt. Historically, we haven't spent a lot of time worrying about placement of master's students, not because we don't care about it, but simply because there hasn't been the demand to help as far as placing those students from, we do have, you see our, our accounting department, uh, obviously, which I'm a part of has uh, very uh, good relationships with, with not only the uh, international big four, but certainly the larger firms as, as well as regional firms within Cincinnati. If that is something that is of interest to a student, it is very simple for me to make sure I contact our folks over on the recruiting side and make sure they have a copy of your resume so that they can reach out to you to try to help work with you to try to set up interviews and whatnot with those firms. That's not an issue at all. It's not something we historically have had to spend a lot of time doing because it's just not something that's in demand of the program, but certainly within the accounting department, that is something that is uh, very readily available for us to help you out with. Yeah, I'll chime in too. We do um, offer what's called Handshake, and that is going to connect you with people that are hiring in your field. Uh, you will also get a LinkedIn profile opportunity through being a student here at the University of Cincinnati, which will also help you connect to people who are looking for um, actual employees. Um, and then it will also allow you to look for who's hiring. So those are a couple of things. There's also a counseling, uh, a job counseling department that we will set you up with. And I think that you will be assigned a, a person, one counselor per one student. So it's kind of a one-to-one -one ratio. And we kind of call that the white glove service here at UCL. Um, so those, all of those um, will be accessible to you once you are a student here at UC. Great. Thank you. Sure. Another question. <laughs> Kind of oh, piggybacking off of what I just said. Um, so a person like me who has individual uh, taxation experience, but not so much corporate. Um, and you mentioned that a lot of the students are kind of in the field already. Mm -hmm. um, is it recommended, you know, um, how successful do you think one would be with little to no corporate taxation um, experience? I, I, I I want to. I, I like to see a business degree from an undergrad perspective. Uh, certainly, the fact that you you've mentioned already that you have experience 
uh, at least doing the individual tax stuff. The program is set up to try to hopefully get you prepared upon graduation. We certainly have, I mean, I'm, I'm, just, that's, I'm looking over my other computer here because that's where I have all my uh, classes sitting up here. Um, you know, we have the, the first class we have really, we have corporate tax, lifestyle, life cycle strategies. There's corporate tax attributes and operations. There's corporate tax formation and structure. There's consolidated tax. So the, the pretty much we try to cover everything that you're going to need if that's the career path that you so choose. So experience on the corporate tax side isn't necessarily required from the front end. Certainly, the more understanding you have of just generally how the IRS works, and, and even if that's just from an individual tax perspective, that, that should set you up for success in the program without a big deal. There, there's no prerequisites as far as specific tax classes that you should have already had uh, when entering the program. A business degree as an undergraduate is obviously helpful. I mean, if you want me to be, to be you know, pick my favorite things, if you had an accounting degree, you obviously have had at least a couple, couple tax classes uh, in, in your um uh, in your undergraduate degree. But again, this is one of those ones where I, I look, I tend to look, the longer someone has been employed, I tend to look more at their work experience and what they've done than I look at specifically what classes they took as an undergraduate. Because as I think we all realize, as we move forward from our undergraduate degree, the further and further we go from our undergraduate degree, the less and less meaningful that degree becomes. Uh, and you reach a point where the work experience overwhelmingly trumps uh, the inf inf information you may have been uh, provided while you're an undergraduate. So, Mark, this is Bruce again. Going back to the experience on pre preparation of tax returns, I have a very basic knowledge of that. I went through the block course years ago. I don't prepare tax returns, don't want to prepare tax returns. So does, does that matter? No, not at all. Again, I mean, you, you, every it's set up so that folks can kind of hit the ground running. Again, you have a basic understanding of what's going on, um, and, and that is perfectly fine. As I said, none of these classes are prereqs for other classes. None of these classes have a prereq from an undergraduate perspective. Uh, again, the fact that you you have the work experience, if not from specific filling out tax forms, at least from a tax planning perspective and whatnot, and, and general understanding of that, again, that is more than enough to set you up for success in the program. I That, that doesn't even concern me. And there's going to be, there are folks out there that have done nothing but individual tax returns and get in the program because they want to go corporate. There are folks who've gone corporate, want to start their own business and probably focus more on the individual side. And and both of those situations as well as yours, uh, they're, they're perfectly, they are the situations that we want to try to help you with as far as making sure you are successful and earning that degree and then setting yourself up for success as you go forward. Thank you. Sure. Hi, my, my name is... Go ahead. Okay. Um, so if currently I'm in the tax industry and I have my enrolled agent license, I've mm -hmm. been doing taxes for several years. As far as course load for the semesters that you were talking about, um, what on a part-time basis, what is the limited or maximum number of classes one is allowed to take without having it be like an overload with their work. I, I, I hate to give anybody an absolute number on that as far as minimum and maximum, because certainly how much you can handle is certainly case dependent. Every every individual handles st stress differently and have has different work stresses and family stresses in their lives. So I hate to say that. I mean, at most, you could actually take, I mean, you could finish this program in a year. What that would mean is that you would end up taking four classes part-time for seven weeks in the summer and then another three in the back half of the summer. To me, that would be too much unless that was the only thing you were doing to set yourself up for a complete career change. Normally, our students, as I say, take about 24 months, which means they're taking one to two classes per seven-week uh, term. Uh, and again, there's that's why we have it set up in the spring where there's only three classes that are offered because we know that if we offered more courses than that, it's going to take folks even longer to get through that program simply because most folks who are at least remotely uh you know in the tax world are incredibly busy during that january through march or april time frame so i don't want to give you a number as to the the maximum that you you can take certainly that's uh individually driven rather than you know something that we would drive i always recommend folks it, it, I, I always like to have folks at least take a class every seven weeks um if they need to take take a seven week time frame off for whatever reason, that is certainly understandable, but that's at least it keeps you going in the program and keeps advancing you towards uh, 
matriculation there, hopefully again within that 24 or if not that, at least 36 months. So is it just safe to say that people can actually take spring semester off and those classes are still offered in the fall and the summer? No, no. If you take if you if you take a spring off, you will ultimately have to pick up those classes in the spring. There are the those those three classes that are offered. And again, we tried to set it up where other the the one there's one class that's offered in the first seven weeks of the spring, which is again, you know, January 15th through end of February, plus or minus. That's individual uh tax planning. The two courses that are set up for the second term in the spring semester are there's a corporate tax life strategies and then IRS practice and procedure uh, class that we offer as well. Um, those will be have those will have to be taken in that spring term. But again, you could you could set it up where you take just one seven weeks and one the next seven weeks. And I, from my personal perspective and, and what I know about teaching classes, uh, taking one class should not be too onerous for anybody. We don't have a size of the program. We roughly, our students, we roughly run a program that's about 75 students plus or minus given a semester. We don't have uh, that critical mass that would be necessary for us to offer each of these classes two and three times a year. We'd need 200 people in the program to do something like that. Um, and we just, we that's something we've chosen not to do at this point. It, we've kept the program a little smaller, a little more intimate to make sure that we have a good handling of each and under, in, each individual student in our program. Hello, can I can I ask a question quickly? Nope, you're out of questions. You get no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, forgive me if uh, I joined a little bit late and if there's some background noise, I'm on my lunch break. But um, I'm currently a senior associate at one of the big four yep. working in tax. Uh, my my education is in uh, finance and accounting. Uh, my The caveat is, I think you guys touched on it a little bit. Um, I had circumstances during my undergrad that didn't uh, allow me to have the most stellar grades, much less than my capability level. Um, what, what, how would you suggest someone in my position sort of position themselves to uh, be be shown in the best light when we apply? To, to, again, you you certainly have that work experience working in the Big Four, which certainly is. If you got hired by the big four, they've seen the capability that you have. I could certainly look at your resume and see, uh, you know, what you've undertaken since you've been in the big four. And in your case, between that experience and looking at your resume, as well as taking a look at the um, recommendation or multiple recommendations that you get, that again is something that that is far more indicative of who you are and your capability than what you could do when you were 18, 19, 20 years old. I agree. Uh, and thank you. Thank you. For sure. That. I have a uh, graduate certificate from University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee um, for state and local taxation. Would that fulfill, be able to fulfill the requirement for the state and local taxation class? I have to look at that. I can't answer that just carte okay. blanche uh, right now. I'd have to look at that and take a look at, you know, what what was actually taught at that versus what we teach. So certainly there there's a chance that that happens. Now, if something like that happens, I could certainly give someone the... Um, you know, the, the credit for that class, you'd still end up having to take 30 credit hours because that is a requirement by UC as an institution. Um, so if you elected to, to jump out of that class because you already have taken something similar to that, you'd end up having to take another class and it would be at, it would be in the MS area, most likely probably be in like the MS finance or the MS accounting side um, rather than within the MS tax because we just have those 15 classes. But we can certainly look at that on a case by case basis. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Okay, guys, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much to Mark for joining us for this info session and all of your um, information and answers to questions. If you do have any other questions, um, please reach out to your enrollment services advisor. You should all be getting a recording of this info session. So you can kind of refer back to um, specific things. And um, again, thanks for you know carving out this time at your lunch break to join us. And we hope you have a great rest of your day. 
Hey, thanks, thanks everybody. I appreciate much. it. Very much appreciated. Thank you.